His Honor the Mayor is going to get things started tonight. Thank you, Frank. As your mayor, it's definitely a privilege to be here this evening, uh, tonight, to welcome the young professionals that are here. And also, I uh, want to thank the uh, Jefferson City Area Chamber of Commerce for all they do for these issue forums. And a special thanks to Stephanie Bell for all of her efforts coordinating this event and the members of HYPE for being here also. Now, the on honored guests we have here tonight are obviously you, the candidates, and want to thank you for your willingness to serve our community. Not only your family and friends and your employers, but also your volunteers will have a huge part in what you do over the next week. And now, Frank, I'd like to turn the microphone back over to you as our moderator, and thank you, Mr. Newell, for being here tonight for this forum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I'd like to extend uh, my uh, welcome as well and uh, explain a little bit of the uh, format that we'll follow tonight. And hopefully we can give you lots of information in a fairly short period of time. We're going to begin tonight with the unopposed uh, candidates for uh, city council positions. Each of those candidates will have uh, three minutes to speak and they will speak in uh, order that uh, of their wards. So we'll begin uh, with, uh, typically we would begin with ward one. However, uh, Rick Prather was unable to be here tonight and sent his regrets. He is already in that position in that uh, he uh, moved into that position to fill a vacancy and so he is already the councilman there and will be in, in that sense an incumbent. Uh, we'll move on however and uh, allow for three minutes for a uh, new candidate for a Ward 2 position, uh, Rick Mahalovich. Uh, and uh, Rick, we invite you to uh, speak for the next three minutes. Good evening. My name is Rick Mahalovich. Uh, I'm a Jeff City resident of the last 19 years. Moved here to take a position at Lynn State Technical College. And we've uh, raised two boys. Uh, one went to Elias, one went to Jefferson City High School. And my wife works in uh, Columbia at the uh, hospital and clinics there. Um, I believe it's a, it's a critical time in Jefferson City, as I've witnessed over the 19 years that that uh, we've allowed a lot of activity uh, to occur, or we've benefited from a lot of activity from the Missouri General Assembly, building and construction with state government and such, and we know now that that's not gonna be the case. So we, as a city, need to be more in charge of our own destiny and take up uh, issues that will, uh, that will forge our own future as opposed to rely on the Missouri General Assembly. Um, I think Jeff Jefferson City can be a catalyst for growth. It's not the, go to, uh, the change agent, but the catalyst for such, and that way uh, allow businesses to uh, flourish and grow and, uh, and hire uh, people. And uh, so that's why I've decided to, uh, to uh, take a sign up for the second ward, is that I thought I have the time commitment now that I can make after many, many years of youth sports and soccer fields and such. I, I feel like I have the time to dedicate to this post, and I hope that I can serve a the second ward residents uh, well and uh, the city of Jefferson. Um, uh, other than that, um, I, uh, I have a, not a strong issue other than I hope to listen and learn from my colleagues and uh, I'm a very big on accountability and I hope that, that, that as I learn more about the accountability measures of the, of the city and the staff and how they present things that I can, can help better understand those for the residents so, uh, so that we can uh, we can all understand how difficult it is to run an operation this big and how we can best communicate that to show that we are doing the things that, uh, that the residents of the city uh, expect. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Frank. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, an incumbent in the third ward, and that would be Bob Scrivener, who has also mm -hmm. three minutes. Thank you, Frank. <clears throat> uh, as you said, I'm Bob Scrivener. And I really don't like reading, but I'm, I'm going to read this in the interest of trying to stay in the, in the time limit. So uh, I was appointed by the City Council as a Third Ward Councilman on October 20th, 2008, following the resignation of Third Ward Councilman Brian Crane. Since then, I ran for a one-year term with opposition to complete the second year of Brian's unfinished term and a two-year term unopposed, which I'm currently completing. If re-elected on April the 3rd, 2012, I will begin my third term as an elected city councilman. There's no one filed against me. I hope the lack of opposition means I'm meeting the third ward's expectations. When I was first appointed as councilman, I was asked if I had an agenda. My answer was no. My desire was to provide 
common sense conservative representation for the citizens of the third ward and Jefferson City as a whole. Now after two years as an elected representative, I find I do have an agenda for my next term. I've become very concerned by the apparent low regard that some in the community, hopefully a vocal minority, have expressed toward members of the council. So in addition to the usual sidewalks and streets and, and other issues that uh, confront us as council people, my agenda for the next two years is to work to improve the image of the council in the eyes of the public and to enhance the public's trust in the judgment and leadership of the council. We are elected to be leaders, but if the public does not trust us either through lack of information, misinformation, or misunderstanding in regard to what we are doing, our ability to lead is compromised. We must attempt to repair our image and rehabilitate the trust factor through better communication, transparency, and interaction with the public. My goal is to work with the council and mayor to create the most open and transparent city government in the country. We as a council have already taken steps in that direction. We've budgeted in 2012 for digital record keeping software that will enable the city as we go forward to make documents that are public in nature available to the public on our website in an easily searchable and downloadable format if one has an internet connect, uh, computer access. When fully implemented, I hope to never hear a complaint about Sunshine Law requests again. Michelle Gleba, our communications manager, has greatly improved the city's communication with the public. The question is, can we do better? Councilperson Carroll and I recently revisited our discussion from last year as to how we as a council might better assist Michelle in getting the city's story to the public. The public's trust of the council and the image in which the council is perceived is directly related to how well the public understands what the city is doing and why they are doing it. I am committed to open and complete communication between City Hall and the public. In the spirit of that uh, communication and two-way communication, fellow Third Ward Councilman Brian Pope and I plan to conduct Third Ward coffees from time to time to give Third Ward members opportunities to share their concerns with us. We've already held a coffee uh, uh, earlier this year. I had two more words to go. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. And I, I should acknowledge our, our timekeeper, Stephanie, has uh, threatened to use those paddles for another purpose uh, <laughs> if, if they go over too much over the time. So she's sufficiently intimidating them. Uh, also in the fourth ward, we have an incumbent, uh, and that would be uh, Carrie uh, Turgeon Carroll. Uh, and you have three minutes as well, please. Thank you. I was elected four years ago, and I ran against a two-term incumbent, so I was very excited to, to run an election, run a campaign, and I think it's a super experience for anybody to be able to, to run a campaign. So congratulations to you, Rick, uh, for completing your campaign in February, and also to the four of you. I think it's great to see so much interest uh, in people wanting to run for city council. And uh, the last two elections, I've been unopposed, and a few things I'm really excited and proud of that we've accomplished over the last few years include renegotiating the the trash contract to include single stream recycling and the council voted and that was very uh, controversial at the time but we voted to to do that and then some people in the city were not happy with that so they did the initiative petition but it was still voted in by the public so that was really a great uh, great way to reaffirm that what the council had done truly was what the public interest was for our community so that really brought us forward and something else that came forward is is the um, no smoking in, inside public places which I think was very exciting for our community a great step forward um, and that was something that was not decided by the ten of us on the council I was actually proud to see that come forward by initiative petition and see the public vote on that so I was supportive of those two efforts that have really been uh, shown our progress in the community um, what really inspired me to run at the time four years ago is when they demolished the homes on McCarty Street. That really kind of got me going, and I thought, well, something may happen there on McCarty. It's still a field to this day, but I know something's going to happen. And I know uh, what's kind of kept me going is knowing that I want to see the conference center uh, followed through. I know that's a potential site for there, although I can say here I'd rather see it on the prison site, but we've got to weigh the pros and cons of that. So a couple things like that have really motiva motivated me to keep on the council, and that was um, seeing through the conference center and, and the potential parking garage that was also on the table during transformation for the downtown area. So those are a few things I would like to see done. Um, I think the one thing that was the most frustrating to me while I've been serving on the council was um, when I had lost faith in our former city administrator, Steve Rasmussen, and had tried to 
um, just due to his performance and behavior on certain issues. And I wanted to, I felt like our city could really run better under better leadership. So that was the most frustrating thing I dealt with. But now, you know, we have a new city administrator and Steve's gone. So those are kind of my highlights and my most frustrating things and where I want to be in the future. And I look forward to serving for two more years. Thank you. Thank you. Now on to Ward 5, where we do have some opposition. Uh, there, is, uh, there isn't a soundproof booth that we're going to keep the others in while we ask one uh, question. Instead, uh, we'll go through and we'll uh, allow each of the candidates uh, individually to uh, introduce themselves. They'll have two minutes to do that. And we'll go through each of the candidates in the order that they're on the ballot. And then I have a question for each of the candidates and they'll be given five minutes to answer that and we'll go through each one and then we'll come back again and start through the process and each one will have an opportunity to do their uh, final remarks. So with that in mind we begin with uh, two minutes for uh, uh, to, to get to know uh, Bob Gilbert. Thank you Frank and thank you Hype for hosting this event. Again, my name is Bob Gilbert. I'm running for the 5th Ward City Council seat. Uh, I'm married to Rochelle for 15 years, and uh, uh, she's a native of Jeff City, went to Jeff City High, and as the reason I'm here. Uh, also with her tonight, I just want to recognize my two oldest kids, Sam and Sarah, are here, and Ben, who's four, is, is at home. He probably couldn't make it through uh, all this uh, talk tonight. So, uh, in addition to raising a family in, in Jeff City. I'm really excited and, and love this community. Um, I've been involved in, in several things and I wanted to talk about kind of where that started. In 2009, uh, in early 2009, I, I joined the Leadership Jeff City class and that program exposed me to so many things uh, within our community that make it tick. You know, the local government, the businesses, our churches, education, and uh, those things got me inspired to be more uh, involved. Uh, since then, I have uh, been on the board of the, the Jeff City Area Chamber of Commerce for three years and uh, also serve as the transportation chair, uh, highlighting and bringing to, to uh, the forefront tra transportation issues uh, to local and state leaders. I'm also on the Cole County Communities Committee and most recently served in the Old Town Action Team co-chair during transformation. Uh, that Old Town experience was very good for me as far as the Fifth Ward is concerned because Old Town is so important. Uh, to our ward. Professionally, I'm a licensed professional engineer. Uh, I'm a location manager of a 25-person engineering and technology firm office in Jeff City. We focus on municipal infrastructure. I've spent 15 years of my life uh, after college focusing on planning, design, construction, and maintenance of public facilities. Advising city councils from anywhere from 200 population towns to uh, over 100,000. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to uh, Larry D. Henry, Jr. Well, thank you, Frank, I should say. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Hype for, uh, for having me here at this event this evening. Um, my name is Larry Henry. I'm also a candidate for Fifth Ward City Council. Uh, I've actually been in this community for fi over 15 years now. Uh, graduate of Lincoln University. Uh, my wife, she couldn't make it tonight. Her name is Jackie Henry. She works at uh, Central Bank. Uh, she's been in the community for quite a long time she was raised born and actually not born and raised but uh, pretty much here for most of her life she went to Jefferson City High School as well uh, we raised a daughter together and she's graduated through uh, through high school and uh, attending college also um, I'm currently a ju deputy juvenile officer here in Cole County uh, for the 19th Judicial Circuit uh, so I deal with the public constantly every day uh, dealing with different families and, and situations uh, and thus and so um, I, at this point in time, um, had actually ran for uh, sit, uh, uh, school board last year. Uh, didn't actually make it, but I told myself that would not stop me. I wanted to continue to be involved within my community and uh, uh, at any way possible. And, and so I'm wanting to do that today. And again, thanks for having me and thanks for coming out. Next, we'll move to uh, Jay Scott. Um, Stacy. Thank you, Frank, and I thank you for inviting me here today. <clears throat> I'm Scott Stacy. I've been in Jefferson City for over 15 years now. I'm married to uh, Joyce, who's a lifelong resident of Jefferson City area. I have three grown children, 27, 26, and 22. 
And I'm uh, an attorney here in town. I have my own firm, and I'm also a counsel for uh, the law office of Todd Miller. Um, I moved to Jeff City to be the safety manager for MoDOT and was there for nine years. Previously to that, I had my own consulting firm where I travel around the country doing uh, industrial environmental engineering, safety, industrial hygiene, and environmental protection. Before that, I was in the Air Force for eight years. I was a captain. I was in charge of uh, Luke Air Force Base Bioenvironmental Engineering Division, and I was also in charge of some satellite offices at, in Tucson and Gila Bend uh, Air Base. And I was in Germany for a time, and when Chernobyl went up and went all over Europe taking samples to uh, make sure nobody was being exposed to radiation. And again, I've been here for 15 years and I love my community and I've been on the Planning and Zoning Commission for five years and currently a member or a commission member and I've also been on the Environmental Quality Commission for three years. Thank you. Next, we'll get to know Sharon or Sherry, Caitlin Burnett. Hi, um, my name is Dr. Sherry as far as Lincoln University and Columbia College and Metro, which I've all taught at all those universities, which is how Dr. Sherry came about because uh, nobody could pronounce my last name. And uh, I've been here over 25 years. I am the widow of Daryl Burnett. I have two sons and two stepsons and two granddaughters that have all been gone to the um, Jeff City High Schools and, oh my, not my granddaughters, but Jeff City Schools. And I feel very attached to this city. I've lived here longer than I lived any place else in my life. And I'm originally from St. Louis. Uh, I attended Crayazer Academy, which was an all-girls Catholic school. And then I have my doctorate from uh, Webster University, doctorate of management. I have a um, master's in, with an emphasis in accounting from University of Idaho and a master's in public administration with an emphasis um, in, in government and government management and a political science. Uh, I feel that, you know, that this is my home even though I was not originally from here. And I feel that um, I enjoy seeing Jefferson City grow and progress and, and go forward. And I think it's a good time to have this involvement. And I thank you for allowing us to come and present our, our positions. Now that we've gotten to know the candidates, we'll uh, pr uh, propose the question to them. They received this question in advance, so they should be prepared to answer it. I'll, uh, I'll begin uh, again. We'll go back to the beginning and ask uh, this of uh, Bob Gilbert. What are the top three issues facing your constituency and how in your elected office will you address each of those issues? You have five minutes, please. Thank you, Frank. Uh, the three issues that I want to talk about tonight, uh, it's probably no surprise being an engineer that uh, sustaining our essential infrastructure is uh, top of mind also preserving our historic assets and also old town revitalization so those are the three things i'm going to be talking about number one on on sustaining our essential infrastructure i actually want to begin a little bit with a, a federal perspective um, i think we all can agree that uh, you know the federal debt and the the point that at which it's at is disturbing and uh, i don't look forward to uh, my kids and, and possibly grandkids continuing to pay that off I, th I look at our city's infrastructure as, as really the one tangible asset that we leave our children and the next generation, and it, it has to be in a, in a condition uh, where they're not left with a burden. Uh, I want to applaud the council and the mayor and city staff uh, for recent increases in priority as it relates to that. Uh, the overlay program, for instance, is going to be double funded next year from where it was last year, and the sales tax uh, has 400,000 planned for stormwater infrastructure, which again is a new, uh, new investment or new program, and that's great. Uh, I do want to say, though, I don't think that's enough. Uh, for instance, on our stormwater system alone, we have 144 miles of storm sewer, 12,000 inlets and structures uh, around this community. Uh, just with the, uh, just with 144 miles of storm sewer alone. Uh, that's over 760,000 feet at $100 a foot at $400,000 a year investment. It would take us about 200 years to replace that system, and it will not last that long. Um, again, I know that's a challenge before us, and we don't have a silver bullet to solve that, but we have to start looking at our infrastructure as an asset uh, that we need to pass to our kids. 
So what would I do? Obviously, uh, make it a priority, keep it at the forefront, and enc encourage cost-sharing programs. Um, I want to en encourage those cost-sharing programs because I see them work in my industry. MoDOT does it well. Uh, MoDOT invests with communities all around the state to enhance the state infrastructure that also serves local communities. We have examples here locally as well in the fifth ward uh, that, that are very exciting. Uh, the neighborhood improvement program, I believe, has been a, a great success in the past year on El Marine Street with uh, the reconstruction of, of curbs and sidewalks where not only the city invested but the people in the ward and on the street invested because they felt it was important. I think we can stretch our dollars farther by encouraging more of those types of programs and we've already seen more applications for that that program since the El Marine project. I think we can do it also as it relates to storm sewers. Preserving our historic assets, I think the, the two most prominent ones that I think are on everybody's mind is the MSP and the current St. Mary's site. Uh, I believe that uh, those are uh, extremely important uh, assets in our community and the deadline is looming. Um, we need to look at those things as assets because if we don't and we do nothing, I think they're going to become liabilities. Uh, what would I do? I, I believe that expanding on collaboration and cooperation among multiple agencies is the answer. It's already begun. You know, the county, the city, the state, the chamber, the MSP Redevelopment Commission have all been in discussions for, for years, and I think the last year or 18 months have been some of the best uh, in making progress on the MSP. In addition, obviously, St. Mary's, Lincoln, Lynn State, and others uh, can be collaborators as it relates to the, the current St. Mary's site, and I want to see that, uh, uh, that collaboration and cooperation expand. Third is Old Town Revitalization. Uh, I want to share really quickly, I think there are some great successes. Uh, I just this past weekend uh, had a lunch event at the Old Town Center that's been restored. It's the old Homer's um, uh, shop or uh, uh, grocery store, I guess, is what it, what it used to be. I think the, the program that has been going on from the, for the city and with the Old Town Revitalization Company uh, are already in motion and I'm not necessarily wanting to to change any of that I just want to promote it um, the incentives that are available for reinvestment in single-family homes and then the banking partners that came forward through transformation last year uh, have made that program even better so what would I do I would promote it I think we need to promote that program in a dramatic fashion because I think when people know that a single-family home for instance is Old Town eligible it's eligible for those incentives it'll attract people to come and live in Old Town it'll attract people to come and live in the fifth ward and I believe that is the the main thing that we need are, are people to be uh, thank you went over my time again next we'll pose the question to uh, Larry Henry what are the top three issues facing your constituency and how in your elected office will you address each of those issues? Thank you, Frank. Uh, three, three issues that I have found that, that's facing our uh, constituency at this point in time. Um, neighborhood improvement projects, uh, that's always a, uh, a hot button issue within, the, within all the wards, specifically uh, our ward uh, where we have a lot of older neighborhoods. Uh, two, uh, continuing to make downtown a focal point uh, of our local businesses due to the fact of how much revenue downtown brings in. Uh, we have to continue to uh, build that area up as well. Uh, also in third, public safety, uh, making sure our, emer er, our emergency responders uh, have what they need to continue to be effective with their jobs. Uh, and you know, back to our neighborhood improvement projects, uh, Bob kind of just touched on it here uh, a second ago. Uh, El Marine looks great. If anyone's walked through that neighborhood, uh, and seeing the difference in what uh, preservation of our older neighborhoods can be. Um, it works wonders for a neighborhood, and um, that's something that I would like to, to work on and continue to see happen. Um, and not only our older neighborhoods, our newer developments where we're not having to spend as much money uh, to keep the upkeep on those. Um, rather, uh, working with our, uh, our neighbors there uh, to make sure uh, the upkeep is taken care of and to where the money doesn't have to be spent where it's uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, so to speak. Uh, 
continue to, and also continue our focal point for downtown businesses. Um, as you see, we we have the different festivals and things that take place uh, certain times of the uh, of the year, uh, and then also that continues to bring business once folks have come down uh, and actually seen uh, the growth of our community within the downtown area. Um, that's always been uh, a focal point for us, and I think it should be maintained uh, and continued. Uh, uh, to thrive and, and to grow. Public safety, again, um, me being a juvenile officer, I work with emergency responders quite a bit, uh, and so that's actually one of the tops at the list for me. In order to, in order for us to be able to do what we do every day and, and to enjoy days like this, uh, public safety is, it should be one of the top priorities for us as far as uh, making sure our police officers, firefighters, other emergency responders have the things that they need to succeed and to excel at doing their jobs much better. Um, that's it for me. Scott, uh, we'll present the question to you as well. What are the top three issues facing your constituency and how in your elected office would you address each of these issues? Thank you, Frank. I believe that uh, my three issues are uh, job growth without raising taxes, reducing waste by cutting wasteful spending, and approving existing services and infrastructure. Job growth without raising taxes. The way I look at that is my wife and many other people I know that work for MoDOT and other state agencies have been losing their jobs due to cutbacks and we need to bring in more businesses into this town to offset some of that uh, layoffs so the people can remain in our area because if they lose their jobs, what are they going to do? If they can't find any jobs around here, they're going to leave. We want people to stay, and we want to bring in young professionals into this area. So if we bring in more businesses into town, give them some type of tax break to get them to come here, that way we can have more people uh, come to this area, and we can also bring forth more to our community. One of the things we could bring forth uh, that could bring employment to this would be the convention center. And we can talk with, uh, that would be one of my goals to get that done. Also to increase the, uh, the festival areas. We can have more music and things like that come to town. Then we can have people do work in, in booths and whatever. Uh, but I think job growth is one of the biggest items that I will look at. Uh, reducing waste by cutting wasteful spending. Look at what programs we have in the city that we can cut or not cut out, but cut back on, and take that money and put it into uh, increasing our services that we currently have, such as our streets, our sewer systems, our stormwater systems, sidewalks, and the like. Uh, improving existing services and infrastructure, again, we take that money, the uh, extra money that we can get from cutting back items, we can increase more employees to do work on our streets. We can increase the funding to work on our uh, stormwater sewers. We can also do the cost sharing programs, as Bob mentioned earlier. And I think we need to uh, start developing more programs, such as the festival district and other things like that, and which would be one of my goals, so our people don't have to go to Columbia, St. Louis, or Kansas City to enjoy uh, various things that we could have here. And if we have businesses come here, that will also not only increase uh, job growth as well, but also increase, increase uh, funding to our city. Thank you. And then, uh, Sherry, the question to you, what are the top three issues facing your constituency and how in your elected office will you address each of these issues? Um, my three areas that I picked was economic development and an infrastructure management system and also establishing a priority of all the wonderful things that were developed for the transformation there were so many wonderful ideas there and try to establish a priority for uh, the economic development I see it in kind of a threefold area one is helping and uh, new businesses so maybe an incubator type system that we could work with the chamber in a second would be the ones that are already existing that we don't lose them. We, I mean, I saw two businesses go out on Dunklin and one's going out of business on uh, Jefferson. I think we need to have a system that they can ask for help 
and maybe even do something close to SCORE where you get retired people or people with experience to help them uh, survive the, the, the economic downfall. And then I also think we need to port a lot of people to bring new business in, giving you know some incentives, but also uh, making them sign contracts that if they didn't stay for the period or if they outsourced jobs, that they would have to pay back any kind of tax incentive we gave them. The, the second one, as far as being an infrastructure um, management system, what I think would be good there is that to look out 15, 20 years and see where we're going to, you know, El Moraine, we just replaced it, so that should be a 15, 20 year project that we'd see again. Having a listing on it that we could put it on the web that people wouldn't be calling and saying, what well, on my side works, going to be worked on, and my side of going to be done, and the first going to be done. We have it all in this way. And we ought to go on and see from what they say that it's donated to part of the cost, so then we have time enough to save up, and no one is coming. And I think that infrastructure is really a major part to make the big impression on how uh, people perceive our city when they come. It's the infrastructure that really is a piece of it. And the sidewalks look like they've been maintained and, and, and the buildings are from the world. I think people feel a bit of a part. I think we have to keep up with some downside and work on keeping that as part of our infrastructure. And I love, I've gone along with downtown the street when I was and I came here uh, with my father, we stayed in the other hotel, which is a long time ago, but it's beautiful. And the last one is the other priority. I think there were so many wonderful ideas for all but I think one of the things that overwhelmed people was that there was too many of them, and they were afraid of the, the increases in taxes. And so I think one of the things we can do, and we see this in a system, is that people vote on the priority of and what do they feel is the most important? Because if you get them committed to items on a financial level, well, then they will they will look for that. And I think that it's really important that we involve our consistency and in voting on what's important to them. One of the things that I've heard time and time and time is that the commitment is that they don't think we need one, they don't think that there is and not to keep people to come back to. So when we left on a big baby stuff, we get some items that are developed like Riverside, you know, park. Uh, they put them in. And they told me that they got the old St. Mary's, you know, the real park would be a great medical museum for the state of Missouri. And I mean, some of the things you can do that we can actually have people, once they get here, have many interesting things to do so they come back the following year. And we want to bring up the mental side because they, they, they have things to do that are interesting and we have things to do in the state. So setting priorities that would build up and having a mental side that is viable, I think it's important. My last thing is I think we should be supporting with some you know, equipment and chain and, and hotels to see if we can't get them when you just build the buildings instead of the hotel. On the president's side, you know, because it's a beautiful place to have a high rise hotel in the Mosley River, it would definitely bring a lot of life to the east side, which has not been, it hasn't received as much attention as it should have. Yeah. And so I know that the things are really important. And I appreciate the time. All right, now we'll go back through the same group and ask each one of them individually for their concluding remarks. And Bob, we begin with you. All right, I promise I won't go over this time, Stephanie. Uh, I, I, just, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, I, I believe God gave me two ears and one mouth for a reason, and I, I plan to use them at least that, that kind of ratio as a council member. Um, I've been going door to door and have learned a lot uh, from talking with residents and understanding their concerns and and I think uh, uh, if I can make one promise in the in this campaign is that I'll be listening Larry to you thank you Frank um, just in closing uh, I just like to say that it's now time for my generation to step up and and uh, uh, and take leadership roles within our community um, we have to be able to, to to move forward with the foundation that's been laid for us um, and so with that, uh, we've got some hot button issues coming up within the next year. Um, specifically, you know, a decision has to be made on the conference center, uh, either yay or nay with that. Um, 
we got some other things, uh, firefighter sales tax, for example, that'll be coming up here uh, this year. Uh, those are all decisions that have to be made uh, and, and worked on. And so those are the th types of things that I would like to, to help work on with the city um, and help make some of those decisions. And I thank you for your time. And Scott? There is one thing that I promise, as Bob said, I will listen. Uh, I believe that my neighbors are the voice of the city, not myself. I've never thought of myself as a politician. I just want to help my community. I've always been in public service, and I believe to continue in public service. And I'm going to, like I said, listen to my neighbors. And I will also do coffee time. I also do neighborhood meetings. And if elected, I will also be available for phone calls uh, at any time of the at any time of the week. And I thank you. And Sherry, what I feel like I bring to the table is number one, my education, my experience. I've worked with the Community Development Corporation in Kansas City for over ten years, doing uh, economic development helping businesses get business plans, working with them to get loans, and bringing them about and giving them support as they grow for the first three to five years. Um, I believe that probably by default, I have more time on my hands than I want. I'm retired and uh, my husband died last year and my children are grown and my youngest lives in Chicago. So I have a lot of time and, and energy to devote to this because I'm a very good researcher, so I don't mind researching. And uh, I like challenges. And I think that that's important to know that they're, they're out there, but just like in a home budget, we can figure out how to, to budget and make good decisions and stay within uh, our, our means and, and not bring in a lot of debt for people. It would make them fearful. And I thank you. I think we... Uh off, should offer all of these candidates uh, our round of applause and our thanks for sticking their neck out. I don't know about you, but I'm impressed that we have some excellent and outstanding candidates uh, that will be on our ballots, and I appreciate all of them uh, coming and introducing themselves to the community in general. And we want to thank uh, JCTV for making this uh, possible to carry it on JCTV, and there'll be repeat broadcast of this, I'm told. Uh, we have on our program that we were going to take an intermission at this time, but uh, we've decided, since we went through all this so well, that we'll just keep moving. And I've uh, asked uh, uh, Nathan Nicholas uh, to stay up here all this time, and so he's been captured up here uh, because he is going to go through the propositions, the three propositions that are on the ballot for your benefit at this time. Well, thank you, Frank, and thank you, candidates and serving councilmen. Uh, we do have three charter provisions on the ballot uh, that uh, we are asking the voters to consider. The first one, Proposition A, is uh, a change to the charter that uh, uh, the city administrator, which in this case would be me, uh, will appoint and remove all employees uh, below the level of department heads. Right now, the charter says that the council appoints and removes uh, uh, employees at the level of the department head or the deputy department head. The problem with that charter amendment is that there's really no title in most departments of a deputy department head, so it's never been really clear exactly what that entails, and it could be interpreted to reach fairly far down into the city government. So kind of in keeping with the spirit of the charter, really I think that the keeping just to the department heads was what was intended, and so that was uh, the basis for that. Similarly, we have in the police department right now, we have a very antiquated procedure for appointing police officers. Every employee of the city police department, every employee of the city police department has to be approved by a vote of the council. Uh, that really doesn't make sense, especially, if, for instance, now where the animal control officers are in the police department. So literally, uh, a dog catcher or a janitor requires a full council approval to appoint them. The reason for that originally was that council, that the uh, police department was actually a political entity and so police officers were appointed based on their party affiliation and so the council wanted to approve those in order to keep that affiliation balanced in some way. 
that is long since gone and in fact when the charter was created we created a, a police personnel board which supervises that process so by the time that somebody comes to that final stage they have already been vetted by this police personnel board who sets up the procedures to make sure that they're fair that they don't discriminate uh, and uh, they have been very thoroughly reviewed and so there's really no basis that the council would ever have to reject somebody other than just sheer personal preference so the feeling was that that uh, vestige should be eliminated and after we had finished putting a and b on the ballot we came across another situation which we then stuck on as c and hasn't received as much attention but uh, it's just a flat out mistake in the charter right now the charter says that if um, I need to make sure I get this right. If two or more uh, people uh, run for an office, then whoever wins in February uh, is the final winner. So, well, when it says two or more, I think what they meant was more than two. So in other words, if you have two candidates and you have a primary, then you would automatically have a primary in February, and whoever wins, wins in February rather than going on to an April election now if you had three candidates or four as we have it kind of makes sense to have a primary to kind of narrow that down and then whoever wins unless somebody wins clearly then they go on to April so you in most situations the way the charter reads now in almost every situation where there was a contested election it would be decided in February rather than in April where it should be decided so we believe that was just an error and so we're asking the voters to correct that and those are the three proposals and we didn't have anyone come forward uh, uh, opposed to any of those uh, so we don't need to give uh, any speaking time to that so that brings us to the conclusion Frank <clears throat> yes I, Bob if I was listening carefully I think you you didn't label those just exact or at least you didn't label them the way they're labeled on my sample ballot the the proposition a on my ballot is the uh, the one that you last described so you oh, might okay. want to you might want to correct uh, if this ballot is correct you might want to correct those labels uh, you're correct councilman and I, I was going by the order that they were in my book which is the order they went to the council but apparently we put them on the ballot in a different order okay uh, so yes a is uh, the fixing the primary issue B is uh, the uh, fixing the issue of, of who hires and fires subordinate employees and C is the police department cleanup issue thanks for correcting that. thanks Bob. <laughs> good heads up there uh, sensing not others and I'm assuming that's accurate uh, I want to thank the uh, the sponsors who are the uh, young professionals of the Jefferson City Area Chamber of Commerce the hype group that make this uh, uh, candidates issues forum possible and um, I hope that you've all uh, been a little better informed as a result of it and thanks to all who organized it thank you and good night everyone <laughs>